some of the main questions I get recently have been surrounding how to reinvent yourself or what are the key qualities the most important in terms of personal development. Now in this video, I wanna share what I think are the three enemies of personal growth and personal development. Hey guys, I'm Alex Hein, author of the book, Master the Day. The worst enemy of personal growth and really just improving your life is victimhood. Because by far, there is no other trait or belief you can hold in your head that says, number one, that I'm powerless and therefore it somehow results in action. So behind almost every trait, almost every form of self-sabotage, almost every form of I feel unmotivated or lazy and tired is some aspect of feeling powerless. You know, being in the fitness industry, I've seen this with so many coaching clients, especially with the women I've coached, which is the majority of my coaching clients. I've heard stories that sound almost identical to the following, where they say, you know what? I've always failed before. Every time I try, I fail. So screw it. I'm just going to eat the donut because you know what? If I eat the donut, at least I'm going to feel good now. And how do I know? I could just, you know, I could just as easily sacrifice the next three months for a diet not get results, feel like, honestly, I'm missing out on all the good things in life because no wine and no chocolate, and at the end of the day, still not reach my goal. So why bother? This is a complete victim mentality because if you believe that no matter what you do, you cannot change anything in your life, it's this idea of learned helplessness. So you might spot victimhood in your own life where you have beliefs around dating. I'm always going to get stuck dating the messed up people. You have beliefs around your weight, like I just mentioned. You have beliefs around money. My family has the money curse. My mom was bad with money. My dad was bad with money. We're just bad with money. The economy sucks. You know, I don't have a college degree. All of these beliefs are really just saying, I believe that I whatever I do will not result in change. So therefore, you're not even going to try. So the second enemy of personal growth is basically, you could call it like clock watching or scorekeeping. So looking at Another person being like, well, they had all these advantages that I don't have, right? Jimmy, he was born into a wealthy family. He has all these advantages. Kelly, she was born skinny. She doesn't have to worry about dieting. She wasn't fat as a kid like me. Or this person, they, have, they always date great people because their parents are still together, happily married. They were never beaten or abused. And look, all those things may be true, right? Okay, maybe your friend makes six figures and that's like the dream income from you and you're struggling and you have kids and you have a family and you work way harder and they don't seem to be working that hard. It seems so unfair. Well, it is unfair, but the point is, okay, they may be successful and that's what you want. Cool. So what? Like now what are you going to do about it? Okay. She may have been born thin with thinner genetics and she doesn't have to work as hard for that goal. Cool. Cool. That's great for her, but if you want to look that way, why does that even matter? You still have to do the work. Okay, cool. They may always have the best people to date because they're the most attractive and have the best personality. Cool. Like you and I, we can complain all day long, but that still is not going to help us reach the goal that we want, whether it is financial, fitness, dating, happiness, whatever it is. Like, yes, all those people have been given advantages, all of us in some way. But that still doesn't help you if you're trying to reach a certain goal. So the sooner you can stop clock watching or scorekeeping and watching everyone else around you, what they have, or the perceived advantages, the faster you can take action. The whole point of identifying these enemies to our personal development is that once you see that at the end of the day, you still have to do the work. And at the end of the day, yes, people have advantages and disadvantages, but how does that help you? The second you realize that is the second you can start taking action and get out of your head. Now, the third enemy of personal development or personal growth is thinking that if you know the right thing, in other words, knowledge, then you're good. And there's all green lights. The path will illuminate itself. So it's this belief that knowledge is power. And it's funny because in society, we have all of these adages and these sayings about love, money, success, happiness, right? Listen, we have sayings for you fall in love when you're not expecting it. We also have sayings for you fall in love when that's exactly what you're looking for. We have, we have sayings about money where like you can inherit a lot of money or win the lottery 
or we have sayings about how you can become self-made. Literally, in English, there are sayings for every counter-belief on every topic. And so people just pick and choose whatever belief that they want to resonate with. People believe that earning money has to be hard, or the only way a person becomes a millionaire is by inheriting it or winning a lotto. People actually believe these things. And it's just because we cherry-pick the evidence that supports the beliefs that we want to have. And that's why beliefs are the most dangerous thing in the world. Because beliefs are the iron shackles we put on ourselves, or they're the impetus that just skyrockets you into holistic success, however you define that. But the thing with knowledge is that knowledge is not power. I mean, this camera is sitting on a bookshelf of like 150 books, and yet I can't at all tell you or that I believe that knowledge is power because I know a lot of smart people that are PhDs on health or wellness or cancer, and they're fat and they're unhealthy. I can tell people that have written relationship books, that have three divorces. Like, knowledge is far less important than something you do with the knowledge. And I think people get caught up, especially in this era, in this generation, where we have access to the most knowledge in human history, and yet people are still as unhealthy as ever, more depressed and anxious than ever. What does this say to you? If it were as simple as knowledge, knowing the right info, to being successful, to being fit, to being happy, to being spiritually evolved. Knowing the right info is all it took. If that were the case, none of the things I just shared would be true, and yet they all are. And so I think when you make the shift in your life to understanding that knowledge is not power, changing your habits is power, changing who you are on a daily basis is power, and changing your beliefs about the way you think the world works, because usually our beliefs are made up from evidence we've picked from our life, from our childhood, from the negative things, from the positive things. And when you realize all of these things, you understand that, okay, this is just a story I'm telling myself, and the only thing that matters is that I change the story and then I change the action. And that will unlock all those barriers standing between where you are and where you want to be and who you want to become. All right, guys, so I hope that video helped. Before you go, leave a comment there below. Let me know for you, I guess, what is the one aspect of your life you're working on changing the most and what are you struggling with the most in that area? All right, guys, the best way to stay in touch is to grab my free personal development and weight loss challenge at modernhealthmonk.com forward slash YouTube and you can check out my last two videos right here and right here.